Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Rick here, hello. Uh, we are delighted to have Simon Jarrett from Kingsley Amplifiers on the show today. Yay! Um, so, I've known Simon for a long time. I've uh, been a fan of, of everything that you've made for a number of years. And there was seven years ago last time yeah, we, I think you were seven in the country. Years ago, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I've been... I've been playing the, the Jester. Well, mm -hmm. The first pedal I found out about was yours was yeah, the Jester. Yeah, Jester, yeah, yeah. And there's something... So, for you guys that don't know, um, the Kingsley uh, pedals, um, the, someone makes these incredible valve-based overdrive pedals and uh, you've extended the range recently and they, you know, mm -hmm. we'll get onto that in a bit. Sure. There's one thing about your pedals that have always fascinated me. Um, and we did a show on valve overdrives yeah, a little yeah, while yeah. ago and had, and had the... Um, the jester on yes, there, yeah. and one of the things I mentioned was that your your pedals um, they have all the lovely valve goodness in them, but they have the output of like a standard pedal. And what I mean sure. by that is a lot of guys with valve overdrive pedals mm. they're like a preamp, yeah, where the output impedance can be really high. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like for example, you can delay on after it, mm -hmm. and all the, the trouble goes through the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or just the pure level of the thing is so crazy yeah, high yeah, that yeah. plugging into an amplifier is kind of pointless. But with your pedals, they they tend to work into anything. I mean, is there like for example, I can put like we're just playing with the page before mm -hmm. and put the memory man on, and it's just divine. Is there a secret to the way that you do that? A secret? Well, I think it's just. <laughs> Um, by the way, thanks very much for having me here, oh. Dan. Yeah, I just can say hi. Thanks very much. A big fan of everything you do. Oh, I really you. Lo love the show. Love oh, the show. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, no. The, um, basically, it's a question of uh, where the pedals came from. Is um, from making amplifiers and right. making valve amplifiers, yep. and uh, tweaking and learning more about them, and uh, uh, investigating the front end of the amplifier and the preamplifier. Mm. And uh, when you design valve amps and uh, you move from single channel designs to dual channel designs, you start to uh, play around with the preamplifier mm -hmm. and see what works in terms of how does it work driving a power amp directly, right. or what happens if you take the output of the preamp and feed it back into the input of the, uh, of the clean channel. Right, right? wow. Yep. And that's actually some of my first two channel designs were based on that concept. Okay. And then you learn how to tame the outputs mm -hmm. and how to um, EQ the outputs, mm. because as you know, most uh, guitar amps tend to already have a somewhat scoop sound sure. as compared to, say, a flat frequency response, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have to do some filtering on the output right. to try to make it uh, play nice with the front end of an amp. Oh, right? you're right. So, so that's basically it. Yeah, yeah. But no, yeah. So the, whereas, whereas there are guys who've simply taken a preamp, mm -hmm. put it in a box. Yeah, and maybe you know, put a, a, a level on the output yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a start, right? But you really need a little bit of filtering as well. Yes. And some playing around with the filtering on the output stage, but maybe on some earlier stages as well, just sure. to, to, to get the result you want to hear, right? Okay, well, we've got a f uh, there's a few new things. I want to just mm -hmm. talk briefly about this. So, yes. Um, my good friend Paul Stacey, and I'm mm. looking for the name drop horn. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Over there. Honestly... <laughs> <laughs> so um paul called me and says i've just got this incredible pedal you've got to hear it so of course i run over there and we start playing with this thing and it is it's amazing um so can you just talk us through this yeah, because sure. this is for me um i mean i have to have one of these mm -hmm. immediately yeah yeah, yeah. um so, so where, where's the page come from? Well, where's it come from? 
Uh, it just basically, so you're familiar with the Jester. The yes. Jester has a boost already, right? Yes, yep. That's a single stage boost. Right. So one half of a, 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 a 12x7 is yep. used for boosting, mm -hmm. right? And it works really well. But basically I wanted to go a bit further and uh, have two stages. Mm -hmm. That does a couple of things. It gives you a bit more gain range. Right. A bit more uh, leeway to uh, to experiment with the, uh, the, uh, the resultant sound and the frequency in between the two stages. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, I wanted to make a better, more versatile boost. So you've got the whole 12x7 being used, nice. and um, then you've got a tone control, and uh, and also because there's a little bit of gain, there's a gain control. Mm. I think what a lot, what happens with a lot of uh, overdrive pedals is that if you use a single 12x7, it doesn't actually generate much overdrive on its own if right. you cascade one state one stage into Isn't the next. Yep. And so a lot of guys go, oh, that's not enough, you know, so they boost it with something or they're looking for something more because, you know, more is always better, right? But yes. actually, you know, if you just leave it and you don't add any more gain, uh, you get this nice dynamic range and mm. a beautiful response and picking dynamics and everything. It's all in there. So basically, yeah, I just wanted to make a really nice sounding boost. And it also doubles as a, a really nice sounding light overdrive pedal, which is designed to sound and feel like going into the front of a nice amp turned up. Okay, right. All right. So we'll just we'll, some quick um, demonstrations of that. Yes. So um, here is, if you want to play for us for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just grab my pick because I dropped one on the floor. So this is the uh, we're using the Lone Star and the Hamster today, and the clean sound is like this. Now with the page on. I could listen to that all day. There's just beautiful. Just mild drive, a little bit of clipping. Um, you know, the, the gain part has a little bit more to give, but mm. not that much more. Right. And uh, it allows you, I think when, also when you're working with low gain sounds, uh, you can be a little bit more liberal with how much top end you build into the pedal. Yes. And that means that you get this more open amp light response. Mm. If you're going for a more heavily saturated sound, then you may have to tame the top end, right. you know, to, to get rid of the sort of razor, you know, uh, bees in a can kind of sound. Yeah, of right? course. So, but the, I mean, the dynamics in this thing are, are just crazy. If you play, I'll just um, yeah, yeah. have Before we go any further, we just need to talk a little bit about your guitar playing. Sure. Um, my, a, a lot of my favourite designers are also some of my favourite guitar players. Mm -hmm. And when I heard the first heard your demos um, years ago. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I got in contact and said, yeah, I yeah. need some lessons because it's amazing. So, you don't need any lessons. No, so let's, so you would, um, you did the, the guitar course at GIT? I went to GIT, yeah, that was back in like 86, 87. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good experience, great time, you know. Uh, learnt tons, fantastic. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many good players and instructors are at such a high level and just mm. being immersed in that environment, you can't help but sort of, you know, absorb some of that and, yeah, wholly I, recommended, yeah. I think... Um, because you're such a great guitar player and I mean that that can only help mm. when you're designing these sorts of things as far as things like you know dynamic range mm -hmm. and picking response and all yes, that sort of stuff yeah, and yeah. getting the feel of it right yeah, that's just right. when yeah, we were setting up yeah. before and you were going through and and you know it was um, just with the different dynamics and the way that you're able just to set the sounds up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know I think it, it's just wonderful to see um, like an engineer and mm. who's also an amazing guitar player who yeah. understands that stuff. Oh, well, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah. No, d um, the feel and the dynamics are, are definitely a big thing for me. I mean, mm. basically, the way all, all this started was entirely selfish. You know, I just wanted to make things I like to play. Sure. Right. You know, so so I was inspired to to make and mess and tinker and stuff. And 
I don't have a particularly heavy right hand, mm. but I'm really conscious of like uh, the dynamic range. You know, I, I want I don't want it to always be super compressed, right, um, or super quiet. You know, I like to play with the dynamic range, right, and the, the picking response is mm -hmm. super important to me. Mm -hmm. so, you know, some of my f favorite players play very much that way. You mm. know, Robin Ford, Larry Cotton, those kind of guys, mm -hmm. right. So yeah, I want I want to be able to uh, get that feedback right. Of, mm. of it's like the, they're still pedals, but you know the experience. Sometimes when you plug into an old Marshall or an old Vox AC30, and there's a certain thing you know, and you wind it up to a certain point, and there's all this volume and dynamic range, and you play with your controls. I want to keep all that. Yes. You know, yes. still have that with the pedals. Yes. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. Nice. Um, just another thing on the on the page. So we also mm. have this. Yes. This, the the new switch. So. Uh, we've just done this show actually about getting solo tones and one of the things mm -hmm. that we talk about yeah. is being aware of the amount of bottom end yeah. when, when you're boosting something yes. and I love that you've done this so this is it just tames that bottom end gives yeah. you a little bit more uh, focus in the mid range um, so I'll just if you want to play and I'll just um, turn this on and off so people can hear it Just what I want to do, just quickly, I'm just going to turn the minstrel on. Yep. And I'm going to use the page as a boost into the minstrel. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Yep. So uh, let's do it like this. So this is the, the minstrel. here and listen to you play oh Just, no it's all messy I'm, oh yeah, a, yeah trust I me i wish i could be that you guys, messy. you guys are great players <laughs> you know, i'm nervous enough yeah. um okay so that's the minstrel that mm -hmm. is there's a there's a uh, really natural compression about that that's mm -hmm. just beautiful um so this is similar to the Jester? Yeah, basically the Minstrel um, covers the same ground right. as the overdrive of the Jester. Okay. So the, the Jester has the overdrive and the boost. Right. So the Minstrel is just an overdrive. Right. Has all the same features, mm. gain, volume, treble, middle and bass, mm -hmm. and a three-way three mode switch to right. give you different gain ranges yes. and different frequency responses. Nice. It covers the same basic stuff. It's a little bit different. It's a different circuit, mm. but it's designed to cover the same ground. It's got a single 12x7 as opposed to the Jester's dual 12x7, right? And to make up the extra gain, it has a, an FET transistor which pushes the valve. Oh, okay, the minstrel yes. as well. Yes. Oh, yes. nice. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put the page now into, into, into the minstrel. Yeah, for sure. So this is without the page. <laughs> Just that bottom end roll off, it just helps to, to keep things helps tidy. To keep, it helps keep things tight. The thing is with a boost is, I mean, the boost a boost has a lot of functions, as you know. Yeah. You, know you can use it just as a volume boost, yep. in which case most guys want it to be fairly full frequency. Yep. So you want to keep the bottom end, right? Mm -hmm. So the regular page, uh, the original version one, was, was about that. Yes. Right? Um, but sometimes you want the boost to cut the bottom end a little bit so that whatever you're pushing stays tighter and more focused, right. whether it be the front end of an amp or another pedal. Yes. Right? Yeah. So the new switch basically just rolls off some low end and makes it more versatile. Lovely. Yeah, that simple, really. Lovely. Yeah. To the minstrel yes then. yeah for sure because that really is divine mm. 
See, when you, that wonderful thing happens that you can play light. Yes. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, and go. everything's still there. When, when you start to dig in. Nice playing. Yeah, that is awesome. Wow. The, the minstrel's a little bit more polite in the top end. It's a, right. it's the, roll, the top end is rolled off a little bit more for a smoother sound right. as compared to the page, which is a little bit more open, a little more zing on the top. Okay. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That page just kills me. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing so is, when you've good. got more gain, as I was saying, you want sometimes you want to watch the top, top ends, ends, right? Sure, you know? sure. So the minstrel's a little bit more polite. It can get pretty angry too and pretty aggressive. That is beautiful. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Now that's the lowest gain mode. There's two more modes which get more gainy. But right. having said that, this mode still has quite a lot of gain on tap, but yes. not for most guys. Yes. Yeah, basically, uh, this is a little bit leaner than mode two. If you go to mode two, it just kicks in the bottom end a bit more, gets a bit fatter. Okay. That's fantastic. Yeah, and then, and then Mo3 gets even more saturated still, but Mo3 cuts the bass a little bit so it doesn't get too indistinct. Okay. You know? yeah. So then... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow. They, yeah, they clean up so beautifully. Yeah, often it cleans up nice. wonderful yeah um, so, the harlot yeah so basically the harlot the harlot actually came out before the menstrual version 2 right and it has a similar design in that it's an FET transistor pushing a Torix 7 valve right um, and uh, it has a simpler feature set so uh, as you know uh, Years ago, I used to make larger pedals, right? And the minstrel used to be big too. Yes. So I came out with this small pedal called the Harlot with an FET pushing a 12x7. Worked great, really liked it, and I wanted to update the minstrel into a smaller enclosure. Okay. And so they're kind of related, okay? They've got a similar architecture, um, but they do sound somewhat different. Of the two, the minstrel's a bit smoother. Right. The Harlot is a bit more aggressive uh, it's in the top end. It's got a bit more zing and uh, openness to it. So it sounds a little bit more like the page pushed. Okay. Yeah. Right, so I want to hear you on the harlot because sir. There's something about the pick attack. When you, so many, so many overdrive pedals, they, they lose that, that transient response, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that pick attack gets mushy, but that, mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds like an amp. Yeah, well, that's what I'm shooting for, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Amazing. For sure. Now that's in the high gain mode. Um, right. 
uh, but uh, we can get a, a much l lower break up if you go to the go, try going in the middle there. Basically, middle the there. way the mode switch works is to the left, it rolls off the top end for a smoother attack. Okay. So it's a bit more like the minstrel there. In the middle, it opens up a bit more like the page and gives you a more uh, transparent top end. Okay, let's hear that. Lower one. gain, yes. <laughs> So that dynamic range, mm -hmm. just from your pick attack. Yeah, it's yeah, incredible. that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like if you plug into a plexi, you know, Marshall cranked up really loud. You know, you've got all that dynamic range, right? So you're trying to capture that, mm. right, with a pick attack. Yeah, mm. it's all. I mean, that's my favourite style of playing is when you listen to guys who know how to control their pick attack and ride their volume, and yep. it's all there. You know, yeah. Just so sensational. But we should hear that with the telly. Okay. fun to play. That's a great sounding guitar. It's a great sounding guitar but you know having having a pedal that has that amount of gain on tap but but is so dynamic. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. it, it, hearing the pedal and hearing you play I can see how it's been designed. Mm -hmm. You know that, mm -hmm. that attention to detail that that um, you've designed it to a point where it has that beautiful range but it's so, it's so musical and mm. responds so beautifully. Oh, well, it's amazing. Oh, thanks so really, much. Glad really, you like it. really beautiful. Like it. Yeah, yeah. The last thing I want to ch so the constable, yeah. this is something I haven't seen before. Yeah, constable is actually different than the others in right. that it is actually a dedicated preamp. Right. So basically it puts out a much healthier output signal. Okay. Uh, which is suitable for driving a power amp directly. Okay, okay. nice. Now if you do that, um, uh, basically, it's a plexi preamp in a box. Unlike some uh, plexi style pedals, which are designed to emulate this, the overall sound of a plexi amp, right? It's that is, not. It that's is just actually a, a plexi. It is actually a plexi front <laughs> right, end. Wow. Okay. So, while that's great and everything, its uh, its usefulness will be different than your typical uh, um, overdrive stomp box. Right. So, you can run it straight into an amp and use it as a really nice booster with lots of control over the frequency response. Right. Uh, but at low output volumes, um, it will be uh, relatively clean, sort of in the range of the page. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But if you wind up the master and allow it to push 
a nice valve amp mm -hmm. or a valve power amp, mm -hmm. that's where the, uh, the what we associate with a plexi sound starts to come out. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. So we can do that with the page or you okay, know, in front well, of an amp. All right, know. so if we put the page on. Yeah. <laughs> So that's just the page. That's the page, and now we're going to boost the page yeah. with the console. So, yeah, and okay, so just turn that on and we'll. Right now we've got the uh, the volumes on the console set quite low, yep. but the output's almost cranked. So it's putting out a pretty healthy signal into the page, right? And the page is doing a large part of the clipping that we hear. Okay. Some clipping's coming from the constable, but most of it's coming from actually pushing the page itself. Right. So the page yeah. is like acting like the power amp section. Yeah, exactly. There we yeah, go. It's substituting, and it does that quite nicely. You know, it sounds a little bit like you could use it as a substitute for a power amp which then allows you to go into a regular guitar amp, you know, as you would with other pedals. Amazing. Um, the volume one and volume two, basically volume one is uh, the bright, bright input, yep. bright channel yep. of a plexi, and volume two is the, the more bass heavy inputs, right? So right now they're both on and you can bring them up or down and you can listen to the different... Uh... Okay, let's do that. outrageous wow okay that sounds incredible um thank you you know as but to be fair i haven't tried a pedal of yours yet that i haven't thought doesn't sound amazing oh thanks so did much. the grammar work well, with that i haven't tried a pedal of yours yet that i thought doesn't didn't <laughs> sound incredible not amazing so good perfect let's let's go with that yeah i'll go for that um yeah yeah but but you know it's the dynamic range in them is incredible. And is that something that you believe is hard to get without a valve? Um, well, I haven't put it this way. I haven't heard a transistor mm. that, I mean, they sound great. They yeah, can sound, sure, you know, I've got, yeah, I've got yeah. of course, we were, hundreds of them, too many of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's something about these pedals that, that the dynamic range is just crazy. Or is that more to do with the design? I think it's a bit of both. It's more to do with the design um, because you can uh, do an awful lot with solid state circuitry, sure. as you know, right? Yeah. And it sounds fantastic. And quite often players like the response of a solid state pedal mm -hmm. into a valve. Into a valve, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I understand that totally, right? This is just a sort of my niche that I've, yeah. I've gone down this road, right? Yeah. But I use solid state pedals too, of course, right? Because there's a lot of, one of the things with the valve amps, with the valve pedals, into a compressing valve amp because you've got mm -hmm. sort of valve compression yeah. into valve compression. You've got to be careful. And you've got to be careful. Of course. But yeah. there's, there's that, um, that transient, that immediacy with, with your mm. pedals that just, it just works beautifully. I mean, like, so for example, with the Hampstead, mm -hmm. that's, that's still compressing, but yeah. it just, it's become another channel. Yeah, that's the idea, beautiful. is it, for it to be like another channel. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. But you're right, you've got to be careful. And it's, it's all to do with making sure, you know, watching the frequencies which are going through the gain stages uh, and what's coming out at the end there. And, uh, you know, like treble boosters work well yes. because they roll off a lot of that bottom end, yes. right? So yep. you've got to be aware of that, mm. and that's partly why I put the second switch on the page, yeah, right? beautiful. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, sometimes it's a fine line. It's some players, for some players and certain rigs, you know, one thing will work and for another guy it doesn't, yeah, right? Yeah, of course, but, of course. Uh, but, Hopefully we've got enough tools to uh, to do the job. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> it has been wonderful. 
to have you on the show. Thank you so much. And thank to hear you, so you play much. again. Thank it's you so, so much. delightful. No, yeah. Well, do you, you next time I'm coming to you for a lesson. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Well, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed that. We've had a lot of fun today. And uh, go and check out um, Kingsley. Is it KingsleyAmplifiers.com? KingsleyAmplifiers.com. Yep. Yeah, and uh, you'll, yeah. that's where you'll find uh, all of Simon's wonderful pedals and accoutrement. <laughs> there Thanks we so go. Much. My pleasure. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.